Okay, I think we're getting on Facebook. Hi, Instagram. Hi, Facebook. Are we there? Yay, we're live on both. Let me just double check on Instagram. Hi, Facebook. Let me make sure Instagram's still good. Internet's always, always catchy. You just never know. You never know what's gonna what's gonna happen. So let me look at Instagram. Yay, hey everybody. All right, so as you guys are joining in, feel free to say hi. Tell me where you're joining in from. Um, I, if you've not joined in for one of these ELA Lives, I am so glad to have you here. We have some really exciting things coming up this week and just kind of continuing our learning together. Even though we're apart, we can still learn from each other all over the world, which is really, really cool. So pop on in, tell me where you're from, what your name is, what grade you're in. I'd love to hear from you. My name is Mrs. Cap. if you've never tuned in for one of my ELA Live lessons, and I am from Ohio. So if you're from my area of the country, hi, and if you are, you're probably experiencing freezing cold weather today, like we are, which is funny because the book I chose, I chose because of springtime and spring weather and all the things that spring brings, but apparently Ohio decided to be winter again for the day. So hopefully spring is coming for sure for us later in the week because this book will still apply. And if, wherever you're at, hopefully it's a lot warmer than it is here. So thank you guys for joining in. We're gonna do a lesson today and we are gonna be learning, we're gonna be using a nonfiction book, but it's a really fun and funny nonfiction book, which makes it really fun to read about this topic. So let me ask you all this question first of all. How many of you guys like bees? Hmm. How many of you guys like bees? You can give me a little thumbs up or heart on Instagram or Facebook if you like bees. You can give me a little thumbs down, no way if you don't. I'd love to hear. How many of you guys like bees? Hmm. Yeah, that's usually the reaction, right? Not too many people, but hopefully today we're going to listen to like a persuasive book and we're going to learn a little bit more about what we think about bees and maybe we'll change our minds. I don't know. We're going to talk about it and I'll give you guys kind of my, my opinion too. So before we get started today, we're going to focus on a ELA skill called point of view. <laughs> so point of view is when we figure out who is telling us the story or whose point of view is the story told from. I always like to use this example with my students. If you have a sibling at home and one day you guys are playing downstairs and you're fighting over who gets to watch what show on TV. And while you're fighting over it, you might be going after the remote control and arguing over the remote control and the remote control flies through the air and it crashes into your mom's favorite vase of flowers and the vase of flower breaks. Well, when your mom or dad or grandparents come in and ask what happened, your story is probably going to be very different from your sibling's story. You're going to blame them. They're going to blame you. And when you tell the story, it's going to make them look bad like they did it. And when they tell the story, it's going to make you look bad like you did it. And that's where point of view is so important because the only person who could really tell the actual story is probably someone who wasn't involved in the action because they wouldn't be biased or have their own opinion, right? So when we're reading books, especially nonfiction, we have to remember that. So we have to look at point of view. So hopefully you guys can see behind me. A little different setup today because I work currently in the middle of moving, so my house is, this house is empty. <laughs> so with that being said, we're I'm on the floor with you guys. It's like we're having carpet time in school right now. So if you look behind me, you can see this point of view anchor chart. We're going to talk today about two different types of point of view, first person and third person point of view. And I always get the question, well, what's second person point of view? Don't worry about that just yet. We're going to focus on first and third. So first person point of view. This is telling me who's telling the story or what perspective is the story told from. First person point of view is told from a character's point of view. So I, if I'm a character in the story and I'm telling the story, I'm telling it from first person point of view. So how do we know that? Well, the character or the person telling the story will use pronouns. Words like I, me, my, because they're part of the action. And the story is really kind of leaning or opinion wise towards their point of view. So again, if you and your sibling got in that little bit of a fight and that vase got broken, when you tell your story, that's first person point of view. And you're going to be a little more opinion towards yourself to make yourself look better, right? So first person point of view means a character is telling the story. Third person point of view is when we have what we call a narrator. And that narrator is not a character. So it's completely different because the person telling the story is not part of the action. So instead of seeing pronouns like I, me, my, we see pronouns like he, she, him, her, they, because the person telling the story is not part of the action that's going on. 
So when we're reading the book today, I want you guys, after the first page or two, to see if you can figure out what point of view is the story told from. Is it told from first or third? And we'll try and figure out who is telling us the story. Okay? The other thing we're going to do today is we're going to write down some facts about bees. Because I saw many of you guys comment. And I see, oh, hi, Brian and Emmy. Is that Emmy? Looks like Emmy. If it's M, I'm sorry. Um, a couple people joining in there telling me where you're from. Nice to see you guys. So as we're learning about bees, we're going to write some facts down. Because what's important about bees is that they help us. And so many of you guys said that, that you that bees are really important, and they are. So here's a little story before we start, because I love to kind of tell a story to relate to this and why I decided to read this book to you guys today. So the other day, I was upstairs getting, I have a five month old, and I was getting him changed into his little PJs, and my five and three year old were downstairs eating a snack, and all of a sudden they started to you know, squeal and scream, and there's a bug in our house. I'm like, oh goodness. And in our house, we don't, we don't hurt bugs, we rescue bugs. Doesn't matter what kind of bug, it can be the biggest spider you ever saw we rescue them. I've learned that. So they're squealing that there's a bug in our house. I'm thinking, okay, it's probably a spider. Maybe it's a fly. You know, maybe it's a stink bug. I don't know if you guys have stink bugs by you, but whew, those are the worst. So they come running upstairs. There's a bug in our house. And I'm like, okay, okay, don't touch it. Mama will come get it. Just hold on one second. And they're saying, we think it's a stink bug or something like that. I'm like, okay, well, don't smash it because it'll stink everywhere, right? So I come running out, running downstairs into the kitchen and I look over and it's a bumblebee in our house. Oh my goodness, what happened? So I'm like, okay guys, don't move. I don't want the bee to sting you. I want you to scare it, have it fly around our house. Just hold on, you stay where you're at. But of course, you know, my, my, my boys are really worried. Don't smash it. Bees help us and they're freaking out. Don't smash it. I'm like, you guys, well, I gotta make sure you don't get stung. And they didn't care. They want to make sure that I did not smash that bee because they started to rattle off all the ways that bees help us. And the reason they started to say that is because we had recently read this book, Give Bees a Chance, and how important bees are to our environment and our world. So they were right. They did not want me to hurt it, and I was not about to hurt this bee. So I had to get a, I basically got a cup, put it over top, scooped it up with a paper towel, and then I carried it outside and let it free. And no one got stung in the process, and the bee was okay. But they have learned as at, five, at five and three years old these facts about bees to understand how bees help our environment. So they've changed their mind. They don't want to get stung, but they're not as scared because they know the good things that bees do. So we're going to read all about that. As I'm getting ready to read the book, if you know something about a bee already, if you have some schema or prior knowledge in your brain about bees, type it in the comments. I'd love to hear what you already know, and we'll see what else we learn and add to our schema during this book. Just kind of checking some comments. Oh, hi, I'm from Pennsylvania. You're so close to me. You're probably cold, just like I am. Texas, you guys are probably really warm, and I'm really jealous. From Michigan, are we moving today? Yes, we're moving today. Actually, the one of the moving trucks just left, so it's perfect timing for me to get a lesson in. Alrighty, so our book is called Give Bees a Chance, and it's by the words and the pictures are by Bethany Barton. And listen for some facts. We're going to write some down, okay? And on the opening page, we see all these different types of bees that we're going to see, too, as we read the book. Give bees a chance. This is my best buddy, Edgar. We love all the same things, like board games and dinosaurs, strawberries and honey. And, of course, bees! Except that I don't really like bees, Edgar says. Mm, nope, don't don't think so. Sure you do. Didn't I tell you there are about twenty five thousand different kinds of bees to love? There's European honeybees and leaf cutter bees and squash bees and mining bees and eastern carpenter bees and leaf cutter bee and a southeastern blueberry bee and a yellow face bee and a horn face bee and a cellophane bee and a wool carter bee and a metallic green bee and a sweat bee and a common bumblebee and a cuckoo bee. Maybe. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of bees, right? And you said 25,000. So I'm going to add that fact to our facts up here about bees. There are 25,000 different kinds of bees. That's a great fact. I see some facts coming through from you guys too. That's awesome. Some of you guys said about how they pollinate. And there's worker bees. They can die after stinging. Very good. All right, let's keep going. 
all these different kinds of bees. And then I told you all about the three types of honeybees. The queens, they're the female. Their job is to make all the baby bees and there's only one per hive. Then there's the drones. There's, these are the large males and they, are, they have no stinger. They can't sting you. There's 300 to 500 of the drones per hive. And then there's the worker bees. They're small, they're females, they have stingers, and they do everything else. They gather nectar, pollen, and water, make honey, feed baby bees with larvae, build and protect the hive, make royal jelly to feed the queen, and more. And there's 30,000 to 80,000 of those types of bees per hive. Ah! Get them away from me! Blow gently on bees to make them scatter. Did you guys know that? I learned that from this book. You can blow gently on bees to make them scatter. We're going to add that fact. It's a beekeeper trick. All right. I think that's a good way to get bees away from you instead of swatting at them and making them upset, right? Blow gently on them. Whew, thanks. Like I was saying, I don't like bees. But why? Most pick up their stingers and attached venom sacs, which are the cause of painful bee stings. That part you told me last week. Last Sunday, Edgar, brave tears, the ouch, the super mean bee, and the stinger. But that was just one bee. Couldn't you still give bees a chance? I think so. Would you give bees a chance even after you've been stung? Maybe I just need to remind you how weird and cool a honeybee's anatomy is. That's a good word. Anatomy is like how they're, their body, how they're made up. They have five eyes, three tiny, simple, one lens, eyes called oscillate. They have two large compound eyes with thousands of lenses. That's pretty cool. They have two stomachs, a honey stomach, or also called the crop, for turning nectar into honey, and a bee stomach for digesting nectar. They have four wings. They lock them together when they fly, and they can come apart to store them on their sides. And they have six legs, complete with a pollen basket. It's an area on their hind legs that can store almost a million grains of pollen. The stinger. Ouch! That's the only part he cares about, right? Just about the stinger. There was a lot of facts there, so I don't want to write too many because I want to make sure we get to keep reading. But they have five eyes. That's a big fact. Five eyes. Can you believe that, guys? So five eyes on a honeybee. And they have two stomachs, and one's called the, their, the crop. I'll write that down. That's a good word, vocabulary word. They have four wings. Four wings. And six legs. That's a lot of legs. Their anatomy is kind of cool when you think about it. Very different than ours, huh? All right, so we have lots of facts we're adding up to this board, and I'm sure you could be adding even more facts to yours. And I'll show you guys the picture of the anatomy of a bee, all the pieces and parts. Maybe you just need some time to, you know, get to know them. How about millions of years? You know, bees lived with dinosaurs. Scientists have found bee fossils from millions of years ago. And even ancient Egyptians kept bees. They had a hieroglyphic symbol for bees. In fact, honey from bees was found in Egyptian tombs. And it was still edible. You could still eat it. Oh, honey. So he likes the honey that from bees, huh? Perfect. Maybe you just need some honey. Bees make honey. Why are you telling me all this stuff? 
so you'll give bees a chance. Once you learn how great they are, you're bound to love them. Uh, I'm not so sure. Check out how honey is made. Well, here's an important part, guys, and if you download the activities that go with this book, there is a bee craft where you can make your own bee and you can tell me the steps to making honey. I put eight steps on there. They go through 10 here, but two of them you kind of combine because it's the same thing happening. First, a bee gathers nectar from flowers. Then the nectar goes into a special honey stomach called a crop. Is that one stomach? Then the contents of the crop are spit up into a new bee's mouth. Ugh. The new bee breaks down the sugars of the nectar within her own crop. This processed nectar is passed along to several more bees who each break down the nectar in their crops until it becomes honey. So it just keeps being passed around. Then the honey gets barfed into a honeycomb cell. And then it's fanned by the wings of the bees to evaporate the moisture. Lastly, it's sealed with beeswax to keep it safe until it's eaten. Did you say barf? Just one pound of honey takes two million flowers and thousands of bees to create. Ah, too many bees! Blow gently on bees to make them scatter. I know we learned that. It looks like I haven't convinced you just yet. Nope, because they're all gonna sting me. Oh, well, bees do sting sometimes, but not because they're mean. Here's some stinger stories. Bees only sting to defend themselves. You look delicious. Back off or to avoid getting squished or smashed. In fact, many bees lose their stinger after attacking. Someone said that there. Which is sort of like your hand disappearing if you pinch your sister. <gasps> you don't want to eat honey anymore. Isn't that, isn't that funny? The, someone, a couple people, people commenting, they didn't know honey was made that way. Like, I don't know if I want to eat honey anymore. But yeah, isn't that weird? They barf it into each other's mouths. <laughs> Nature, right? I do love honey though. Also, wait, what are you wearing? Bee armor. That's not going to work. It was designed for dragons. I think it can handle bees. Well, there is a kind of armor that beekeepers wear, but it looks quite a bit different. It allows them to collect honey and beeswax without getting stung by startled bees. They have white color, so it puts the bees at ease, it calms them. The veil protects their eyes and the neck. The hive boxes have removable frames for the bees to build honeycomb in. They have a suit and gloves to cover skin and the beehive frame filled with honeycomb. He's, he's over here saying, sure, fill up the honey for me. You know, I love honey, but I'd be willing to give it up forever to never see a bee again. But giving up bees means giving up so much more than hunt just honey. Some scientists say bees are responsible for a third of all the fruits and vegetables we eat. Bees have a big impact on the food chain. You see, in order for plants to grow, fruits and vegetables, they need the right ingredients. Sun, water, and pollen. A major ingredient is pollen. But since flowers can't move, they can't always get pollen from each other. I want to make a strawberry. Throw me some pollen. Um, I don't have arms. He can't make a strawberry without pollen. Another flower can't throw him some pollen, so how would they do it? That's where bees fly in. A bee's fuzzy body catches pollen from flowers. Pollen falls into the next flower the bee visits. They act as a pollen delivery service, helping give flowers the ingredients they need. A single bee can visit over a thousand flowers a day, making bee pollination powers unparalleled.
That's pretty superpowerish if you ask me. A thousand flowers a day. Which means without bees, there would be a lot less yummy stuff to eat. And the milk carton says, have you seen this pollinator? So we can't have the food without having the bees. And bees are disappearing in large numbers. They're missing a bee occupation pollinator. Possible reasons for disappearance, pesticides, parasites, lack of bee-friendly flowers, and pollution. Bees actually need our help. Okay, I take it back. I don't want bees gone. I even sort of want to help them. As long as they don't sting me. Planting bee-friendly flowers is a great way to help the bee population. Like a blue hyacinth or hyssop, cone flowers, and asters flowers. So we can plant bee-friendly flowers that they come to. That's a good idea. Won't that just attract more bees? Hopefully, yes! But just approach a bee like you would a dog you don't know. Don't get too close and don't try to touch it. Unless you're a flower. It should lose interest and fly away. And if more people like you give bees a chance, they might just have, well, a chance to make the world a sweeter place. Now that I told you about bees, have I told you how much I love bears? Oh boy, he's like, I don't know if I can get on board with that. And that's the end. So, so many facts and things we learn about bees. Hopefully you learn something new about bees and how they help us. So today, if you guys get a chance, your teachers might send these to you or your parents might be able to find them. My social, my Instagram is at wildthingslearn and I posted a link to digital resources to go with this book and a PDF that could be printed. There's a couple activities. There's one, there's an area for you to fill up a big thing of honeycomb with facts about bees. You can go back and watch the video or write down the ones that you can remember, facts about bees. There is a bumblebee craft. If you're printing it, you build the bumblebee. If it's if you're doing it on the computer, you type on the bumblebee to tell me the steps to making honey. And there is a section for content vocabulary because when we're reading a book like this, we have to learn new words that have specifically to do with bees that you might not have known before, like pollinator or anatomy or crop in this de definition. So you can go in there and you can choose some and do some vocabulary strategies to learn the meanings of some new words. And I also gave you some extension activities to do. My boys love to make their snacks into shapes. So I gave you an idea of how you could make your snack for today into a shape of a bee. And you also can do some more research to learn more about bees in your area or bees that you know about. So thank you guys for joining in. I hope you love the book. Before we get off, did anyone figure out what point of view this story was told from? Was this story told from first or third? I'll scooch over so you guys can see the anchor chart again. Remember, first person, a character is telling the story. Third person, a narrator is. What do you guys think? First or third? You can type it in the comments right now. So was the person telling us the story... Were they a character? Were they saying things like I and me and my? Or were they a narrator saying he did this and they did this? What do you guys think? I'm coming through. Good job thinking about it. You can type first or third, whatever you think. Or you can type one or three so I know what you think. Okay, got a couple people saying first. Good job. Ooh, someone said first, but it's a narrator. That's kind of true, isn't it? Very good. All right, so those of you who said first, you're correct. Right here he says, we can look at the very first word or first sentence. This is my best buddy, Edgar. We love all the same things. So because he says my, he's talking about himself and he's part of the story. And he says we, he's including himself as part of the story. Now, this is where it gets kind of confusing because teachers, we could use this as a, as a teachable moment. If they're talking about the bees the narrator is kind of telling the story, but the narrator is putting himself in the story. So some students might get confused and say, oh, it's third person point of view because they're talking about the bees. But the 
person talking saying I, me, my, they're actually telling the story as a character who's part of it. So it's kind of a good teachable moment, teachers, for us to talk about point of view. All right. Thank you guys for joining in. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful Monday. And what I'm really excited to tell you guys is we've been doing these lessons now. I think it's been six weeks. Can you guys believe that? How many times we've gotten to read together? And starting tomorrow, we have some more guest teachers from all over the country who are going to be joining us and doing ELA lessons. So I think Chelsea is up tomorrow, but I'm, I'm going to double check on that and we'll post on the Get Your Teach On page the lineup and who's coming up next the next day. But just like you guys have got to learn from teachers all over the country, there's been set or eight of us that have been doing these lessons for six weeks. We're going to continue, but we're going to add in some other teachers to bring more teachers from all over the country in to share their love of reading and ELA strategies and all of their skills to help us continue to read and learn together during this time. So get excited. Guest teachers coming tomorrow. Some more teachers to join in the fun and share so many more books with you. So remember, come on every day at 1 p.m. on the Get Your Teach On Facebook or Instagram page and join us. And teachers who are commenting again, my Instagram is at Wild Things Learn, and I put a link for the resources to go with this book that you can use with your students digitally right now. You can print and give them to them or save it for, fu for future use. All right. Thank you guys for joining in. Bye. Have a great day. Bye, Facebook.